does. She knows the plan. Caroline Baldwin is here to talk about gardens and lawns and everything associated with that. And if you would like to talk about yours with Caroline, you are invited to do that. The number to call is 622-9622. Caroline is a master gardener. Good morning, Caroline. How good are morning, you? Good morning, Larry. Real good. Real good. Is it raining anywhere out there yet? Yeah, it's it's drizzle. It was a light rain when I was, was coming was in. It? Yeah, I had to run the wipers a little bit on intermittent. 90% but, chance of rain yeah. today. Yeah, and I was on a conference call before I came in for my work and everybody who was on it who they're all over florida here and they're all going well i hope everybody's staying dry it's pouring here oh and, really and apparently areas, everybody's then. playing hooky over on the oh, really? atlantic <laughs> coast because i guess all the surfers are out it must be a pretty good with, well, the, with the moon and that kind of there was a big the, thing out yeah. there that were warning average swimmers to right, stay out of that because right, so, you get yeah, the rip currents yeah, and things yeah. like that but yeah apparently everybody's playing hooky and and going surfing today at the beach and so. Yeah, I, I, you know, everybody likes to think that they're better than average as a swimmer. Right. I would consider yeah. myself less than average. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> just, if just I know there's riptides, I, yeah, I'll, I'll go in my ankle. You know, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Although that's when the fish come in, don't don't they? Yeah, a lot of times you'll get them, in, but you still you've got to be careful because all you need to do is have your feet knocked out from under you. And, you be, know, yeah, especially yeah. 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 Do you know what always, always amazes me when uh, when people talk about the gold <laughs> that has washed up after a storm, mm-hmm. like gold that's been under the ocean for centuries? Right, right. I, I yeah, the, the coins and things like that from the shipwrecks. I mean, that's pretty rough surf to pull that something out of the bottom. It usually takes a tropical storm to yeah, bring that kind yeah. of stuff up. I would love that. Yeah. Wouldn't you love that? Oh, that would be so much fun to. to I mean, go I mean, through and and. and and find something, yeah. Fun and profitable. What's the yeah, what's the old saying? P- yeah, <laughs> finders keepers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get to keep that or no? I don't know. Huh. I don't know the rules on that. But you no, know, it'd still be just fun to find it to find oh, a piece yeah. of find a piece of history. And you never know too in the garden, you know, especially if maybe you you are on an area that was um, maybe say a vacant area for an extended time, but may have some history long you know before if you happen to be one near one of the rivers or one of the lakes you never know what may have been built there you know right. in the 1500s right. or, right. or before you know whether or not it be indian uh you know native american stuff early early right. settler type thing did they stop here and you know and you're finding pottery shards and and arrowheads and things uh, that maybe somebody never knew about as you get digging or excavating in your, your right. garden or landscape right. Right. Did, did, so. I, did i tell you i found an arrowhead or a spearhead at the old WTMC, just just oh, on, next okay. to the interstate. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I went walking my dog. We were right by the fence just before the interstate. And she's, you know, doing her thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking down and saying, gosh, that rock looks just like an arrowhead. And you picked and it up. And I picked up it up, and, and sure it enough was. was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not just a, an accidental, this thing looks like it might be or could be. Do you know Ken yeah. Nash from the... Uh, Oh gosh, she's at the the same place that uh, Suzanne so, works at. Oh, oh, Discovery Science Center. I yeah. think I think I've met him yeah, once. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a meteorologist yeah. from like the Air Force, I think. Okay. And he knows history and that kind of stuff. He sure. looked he looked at it and he said, "Oh my gosh, you have yeah. to, you have to turn that into the college. You can't yeah. keep that." Oh. <laughs> I said, "What? I can't keep it." Well, they, the, the reason they say you need to turn is so just because to add it to a historic collection and things like that. It's Joe behind you. Uh, hey, Joe. Hi, Joe. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so I turned it in, but they did give it back to me. So no, that was nice. I put yeah. it in a shadow box, and my oh, dad, my dad nice. had it on the wall for forever. For a long time. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, that's kind of. I don't fun. know where it went. I think I think my brother has it now. You so, may have it. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so we got some rain. Do we actually need the rain, or we are um, are we okay with the rainfall amounts? It we we had a few dry days, and if you if some people with you know lawns that they're really caring for noticed a little bit of uh little you know a little bit of stress in there it's always nice to have rain um you know when when we can get it because yeah, yeah. it will it will stop for several months or become very you know much less i don't know if we're not we're not desperate for rain because we have had i think a you know at least an average um summer i don't know how many inches i right, should have right, right. looked something like that up but how many inches we actually have gotten in marion county um i know they say our area is like 52 inches a year which we get in a three-month period it wouldn't it be nice if we got one inch a week instead of all 52 inches in a three-month period thank you oh <laughs> I, I, we have a phone call but i have an Great. interesting thing i want to tell you about uh amount of water it takes to grow coffee Okay. Today's National Coffee Day, That's so right. I, I have That's that right. little bit of trivia. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning, uh, Carol Ann. 
I got a grapevine, that, and the grapes are, I think the bullets has got seeds in them. Can I plant the seeds and get another vine, or what do I do? Um, they're probably, I mean, unless, if they're a muscadine, they're even, most of those are usually um, a hybrid. You know, it, you may or may not get the same variety, depending on what you, you know, what you've got growing there, unless you know that it's not a, a hybrid. You know, it, you know, if you know it's not a hybrid, you can plant it. And it'll come true. Okay. So and it's a hybrid. It won't. It won't be. Any it, good. It's. It's not going to. But more than likely, it's not going to come true to seed. So where you may have had a a nice, um, say, large marble size uh, grape on this vine, the ones that come out might be like half that size, or maybe not as sweet. So okay, it, that's what I want to know. I just, just, I'll just get another buy another vine. But the, it, the grapes are so juicy. I mean, it, but the things about three years old, and man, it really, really put on a lot of grapes this year. What you okay, might do? You. Okay, but what you might do? Uh, are you still there? Okay, he hung yeah, up. Oh, okay. Uh, what you might do is anything, any of the shoots that start coming off the bottom of your um, of your vine off the bottom stem is go ahead and cut those and get those rooted and you could you could redo those and that way it's just it's you know a cutting off the parent plant okay that's what i want to know okay i can go both ways and i'll try yeah. both ways then. yeah sure okay, thank you you're welcome very good uh, you had another call, but I guess they bailed out. But okay. you're welcome to call at any time. This is a full hour show, so you got plenty right. of time to call. So here, here's the thing: okay. it takes 37 gallons of water okay. to produce enough coffee seeds. They don't call them beans for right. some reason. Uh, to produce one cup of coffee. <laughs> wow. 37. That's a gallons. 37 gallons. Isn't that interesting? Of water. For one to, cup to, of coffee. To grow enough, enough seeds. Enough right. seed to produce one cup of coffee. Right, right. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. So it kind of goes, yeah, no wonder coffee can be expensive because not only is it, uh, you would figure your rainfall or your irrigation for yeah, the, right, for right, the right. farmer, but also a lot of times they'll have freezes in the mountains in some of those right. areas that, that are dead. And at Maxwell House, the they have freeze drives. <laughs> <laughs> or is that Sanka? <laughs> uh, good morning. You're on there with Carol Ann. Um, good morning. Morning. I, I kind of feel as if I'm in the twilight zone out here. All my summer flowers are blooming really pretty, and the mums are just starting to pop open. Right. But I've had azaleas and camellias blooming for at least a week. Oh. Now, they're not full bloom. I, I do have one fashion azalea that's really big, and it's full of buds. It's right. going to be full bloom. But the other ones are, you know, two or three popping out, and they bloom, and then maybe a couple more pop out. You know, it's just so strange. Well, that yeah, that's just a little oddity, um, whether or not, a, you know, between pruning, temperatures, rainfall, um that you know so long as it you know and the variety as well you know that's yeah. you know some azaleas bloom two or three times a year they'll bloom yeah. in spring summer fall and so if it's one of those varieties it you know it could just be the first parts of that fall bloom the camellias yeah that's a little early because most of your camellias um well they'll start blooming normally anytime november december uh so that's just a couple of early early little blooms coming on and and giving you uh some wishful thinking to what this uh cool season <laughs> flowers are going to be yeah, wait, but the azaleas I think they're going to bloom in the spring again. That and the ones that are blooming. Um, it, it depends on the variety. The ones, I mean, if you're only getting a few little flowers here and there, I wouldn't be real concerned with that. Okay. Don't prune anything off. Don't fertilize them. Um, just let them let them do their thing and and see what happens on. Um, in the springtime and after the bloom in the spring and, and you cut them back and you fertilize them at that point um, so I would just it's a matter of a matter of wait and see it's hard to say unless they're one that is a, a, a fall spring bloomer yeah it's just it's just been kind of odd like my hummingbirds left a month early this year oh and I thought oh my gosh I hope that's not a no, because you know, foretelling an early winter. <laughs> no, because I know I've, we've seen some hummingbirds still um, within the last week. 
I, so. I, I see one or two of which I think must, you know, now and then I'm keeping feeder, a feeder out just in case because right. I think maybe, maybe these are migrating. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I had three feeders that kept busy okay. you know, for, for months, and then all of a sudden they just they just left you they know, just right right and they and could be they could be beginning the migration yeah a little earlier yeah like a whole month yeah yeah, yeah. let's let's hope that's not yeah. foretelling that we're going to have a bad yeah. winter or an early winter hmm. an early one yeah right yeah okay it's always nice talking to you and I enjoy your program thank, thank you. you all right thank you for the call we have another uh 43 minutes left in the show so if you want to call in uh you can do that now or wait till after the break either way you get on the air by calling 622-9622 caroline baldwin is here to talk about gardening with you we'll be right back The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for today. Clouds and breaks of sun warm, but you move with a couple of showers and a heavy thunderstorm or two. Watch for flooding downpours, the high 84 to 88. Partly to mostly cloudy tonight with a shower or thunderstorm in the area near the coast early on, below 72 to 76. Tomorrow, times of clouds and sun with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, the high 86 to 90. Thursday, mostly cloudy with a shower or thunderstorm, high 86 to 90. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Are you in need of custom screen printing, embroidery, or promotional items? Then look no further and come visit the brand new Legacy Team Sales. LTS is conveniently located off 17th Street next to Armstrong Homes in beautiful Ocala. We offer the best prices and highest quality products for your company, team, school, or nonprofit. Whether looking for screen printed shirts, embroidered polos, or travel team uniforms, you'll be sure to find it at Legacy Team Sales. Come visit our new 27,000 square foot facility. Our friendly and knowledgeable sales staff will assist you in every part of your custom purchase. LTS carries the hottest brands in the industry like Under Armour, Russell, Mizuno, Asics, Badger Sports, Gildan, Pacific, OGO, and many more. At LTS, screen printing embroidery is done in-house and we guarantee customer satisfaction. Stop by, give us a call, or check us out on the web at shoplts.com. Remember the name, LTS. Don't get caught without your daily source of senior deals. Pick up your copy of the Senior Voice newspaper. It's your source for schedule and events tailored to seniors with information you need, like a list of free events in the area. We even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company to you that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about them. For more information, call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223. And pick up your copy of the Seniors Voice at most any business up and down the 200 corridor. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper online. Robin, let's try a little plant trivia. Name this nursery. It's a not-for-profit, and it teaches growing and caring for plants to their students. Oh, that's easy. Kenny's Place. Or how about this one? It's a nursery conveniently located between Ocala and Bellevue. Again, it's Kenny's Place. Or how about this one? A nursery with a wide variety of just what you need or want at the most reasonable prices. Kenny's Place, of course. Kenny's Place at 7677 Southeast 41st Court. Give them a call at 867-1213. It's a caring place for people and plants. It's Kenny's Place. Putting the local back into radio. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. W-O-C-A News. Variety. Information. Now. Keep your arms and legs on the inside at all times. 20 minutes after 9 o'clock, Caroline Baldwin is in the studio talking about gardens and lawns. And Caroline, you have a phone call. Let's take that call. Good morning. You're on the air with Caroline. Good morning, guys, and Caroline. We missed you last week. <laughs> well, I, I had to get a tooth finished being fixed, so <laughs> I really wasn't out on the campaign trail. <laughs> well, you, you, were, you were having a ball. <laughs> no, it was, was, was putting, a, putting a cap on a tooth, so it's all yeah, fixed I, now. I, I've experienced that quite a bit. i got a lot of money in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> they... Uh, the, uh, we had some road construction done here on my site at town about a mile. They redid and resurfaced, and uh, most of it they laid sod. And okay. after there was a big area that they, they laid uh, seed and then some straw on it. And, and uh, my God, I would think l- less than a week it, w- it was turning green already. What kind of uh, seed did they use, uh, uh, the county people? They may have put some rye down or... Um I'm wondering if, yeah, you know, I don't think they would have used Bermuda, but they may have. Um, it, it may have been because of the, just the temperatures and the amount of moisture. It might have been a, it might have been a ryegrass. 
wouldn't it be a little bit early because of the still we uh, you know be kind of hot yet? Um, I would think so. But with the yeah. with the with the straw on top of it and the moisture, because you figure they come through with those those tank trucks and spray that all down for it to take, and the amount of rain we've got, it it may have actually um, you know made a benefit you know to that. But I'm not real sure because Bahia takes you know upwards to three weeks to germinate. Um, right. And it might even be, depending on the straw, that may have even been some of the some seed just from in in the straw. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, where that stuff starts to, you know, if you if if it doesn't have all the the, you know, there's sometimes there's there's seed still within hay, and sometimes in straw that starts to sprout. Yeah. Say the other day, uh, I was driving by uh, Muni Golf Course. I mentioned it on Town's show the other day. Uh, it, all, all the sprinkler systems were blasting away like crazy. And with all this rain we had, I, I, I still, it's hard for me to understand why they would be watering. They really, more than likely, they're not. It's watering, but it's not. A lot of times those are connected within um, the the water reclamation, the recycling of water, and this still needs to be pumped out. And, and a lot of times it's, it's out of retention areas where the retention areas start to get full, and if you put that water back on top of a grass, the grass acts as a filter, taking it back down through, as well as lowering the levels inside of retention ponds. Yeah, you don't think too much water would wreck the grass, huh? Well, they've got the ways that, you know, the drainage and things like that. A lot of times, um, well, of course, because of where I work, I hear a lot of the stuff on the village's golf courses and where they will have courses that are closed because of the amount of rain and they just give it a few days to, to perk through or that they've pumped water onto it and need to give it a chance for that to dry up, to be absorbed Um when done right, and of course they're professionals maintaining those uh, those greens and things like that, so that that they they know how to control that kind of issue. But yeah. it's it's more than likely it was not their regular watering system. It was more than likely either um, doing with the you know the the reclaimed water or emptying of or using up of of some of the um, uh, storm water. Yeah. Another real quick question. When, yeah. when is the uh, uh, the second uh, corn crop while well, in Florida here uh, are going to be due? Uh, it should be. I would say October, November. It should be coming in shortly because I know, depending on, on where it was planted, I know for us we can plant in early August uh, to get a second batch in. And if you figure about, I think it takes about 75 days or so, um, you know, your August, September, October, you know, first part of November, you know, would be um, about the time you'd be looking at the harvest, sometime in mid-October, first November. Yeah, I, I know up, up north, of course, naturally there's only one harvest, and uh, right. uh, in, in, the summer, in the summertime, if there's a lot of rain, that's always been a problem for the corn, for the corn, corn farmers. Uh, I'm just wondering if they're having, you never hear nothing in the paper or hear anything about it, it would all the rain that we've had, the wet uh, uh, summer we've had if it has affected the uh, the corn growth or not well with us because the corn because it's sweet corn it's the edible corn it's normally planted very early spring and they may even get I'm not sure if they're able to get two crops in in the spring but done before that all the rain comes in in summer and then replanted in August you figure it keeps them from having to irrigate quite so much um you know, on field corn, you have the problem with the rain because you need that corn to dry on, yeah. you know, on the stalks. Um, yeah, what, what, what part of the state is most of the corn growing? Um, I know a lot, you know, you got Zephyr Hills, um, does a lot of corn. Um, Zellwood has, you know, a big amount of corn. It's grown throughout the state. I, I don't know if there's one particular area or not. I think it's seasonally. It moves up and down the state. Yeah. yeah down well, down in I'm South gonna... Florida, I don't know if they grow too much once you get down, uh, say, south of Palm Beach. But I think you're, you know, all the way down at least until, you know, around Orlando, maybe a little bit further south. You're probably getting pretty good corn still. And then, of course, all the way to the Panhandle. 
Yeah, oh, I'm looking forward to the second. I just love corn. i got to have a, oh, a yeah. two or three times a week. And uh, I, I noticed the stores have been void of uh, any corn, and I was kind of wondering, boy, I said that second crop's got to be coming around pretty quick here. So uh, let's let's hope it's going to be a good one. Yeah, let's hope so. I'm, I'm with you. I love good Florida corn, good good white corn. Uh, I'm, a, you know, I'm a snob on that. I want white corn. Me too. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> corn on yeah. the cob. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, thanks. With real butter. Oh, yeah, and, and salt. salt. Yeah. See, the doctors it. say no, 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 but uh, I, Yeah, that's no, it's good for you. It's just you. really good it's stuff. It's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in moderation. The that's Amish can't I, be yeah. wrong. They, no, they can't be wrong. The Amish yeah. don't use anything but real butter. Right. They use I real guess. butter. Yeah, they baking, yeah, they're not making margarine, you know, <laughs> And, you know, if you, if you believe any of the stories, they'll, they'll tell you margarine is one molecule off of plastic. So I've I'm heard that, sure. too. I don't know if that's you know, true. But, but, of course, we, we're one DNA strand off of some other creatures, too. <laughs> right, right. So, you right, know, right. It, it's it's all in, in how you measure it. And we have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Morning. How are you this morning? Good, Carol-Ann. good. Um, there's a place in, uh, right before you get to Bellwood, I guess, right by the airport down there on 441. Mm-hmm. Called I think it's Scott's Farm. They usually put out corn, I want to say probably October, around the show time, because when I go down there for, used to go down there for plants, okay. they have it on the side of the road. Okay. Um, fabulous. You could just eat it right off the oh, yeah. uh, top without even cooking it. Sure, sure. Nice and sweet. So so about mid-October? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. It's... Oh, and the Mount Dora area is Scott's Farm, and they're really good. They also have a farmer's market down there. Okay. So there you go. Have a great day. All right, thanks. By the way, speaking of corn, Uh October is just a few days away, so candy corn. Candy corn, there you go. Candy corn. Oh, candy 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 corn. corn? Oh, I love candy corn. Now, can you imagine candy corn flavored coffee? No. No, I, I saw. Yeah. I, I know. <laughs> Today's and National yeah, Coffee Day, yeah. and there there was an ad for candy corn it's, flavored no, coffee. Ca- yeah, that's all this pumpkin spice and this <laughs> and that. It's like no, no, too much, too much. Everything in moderation. <laughs> I will eat. I will consume my share plus probably three or four other people's share of candy corn. Actually, I like the Indian corn better. That's the one with the with the, the chocolate. Dark? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, the yeah. So I I will consume <laughs> my share plus probably a couple other people's share by the time hmm. that runs out. We have to take a little break, and we'll be right back. Carolyn will be with us another half hour, so you can have your questions answered. It doesn't have to be a question, by the way. You can call in and just say, hey, you know what? I've got a garden, and it really is nice. There you go. If you're Donald Trump, you'll say it's very, very nice. Very, very nice. It's the best garden. It's, it's worth billions. In the world. Yeah, Bill, yes, worth billions. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back. Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. The Senate expected to pass a stopgap measure to keep the government running through December 11th and also sidesteps the fight over Planned Parenthood. Democrat Debbie Stabenow. We are seeing a positive movement. Republican presidential candidate and Senator Rand Paul is against the measure. It continues all the bad spending. Both chambers are expected to pass the bill by midnight Wednesday. Fox Radio's Rachel Sutherland. The president and his Cuban counterpart meeting today at the U.N. Yesterday's face-to-face with the Russian president centering on the fight against ISIS. Vladimir Putin insisting that the Syrian leader be involved. The president bluntly rejecting that proposal, saying Assad, a tyrant who barrel bombs his own people, should have no role in fighting ISIS. Fox's Eric Sean in an Aer Lingus flight heading to Ireland forced to return to JFK where some of the brakes burst into flames. The plane safely evacuated last night. Fox News, we report, you decide. Do shopping online and using public Wi-Fi make you vulnerable to identity theft? Does giving out your social security number put you at risk? Is your dog at risk of identity theft? Yes, yes, and no. Your dog has absolutely nothing to worry about. But we do live in a world that can expose a lot of personal information, and that can lead to having your identity stolen and losing everything you've worked for. That's why at LifeLock, we use proprietary technology to detect a wide variety of threats. And unlike free credit monitoring services, we have a dedicated U.S.-based staff to help restore your identity if it ever is compromised. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses. But if you ask yourself whether you're worth protecting with the best, isn't the answer a resounding yes? Plans start at $9.99 a month, and now you can get 10% off. Go to lifelock.com and use promo code NEWS. Hi, 
This is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Ah, ouch. Does pain have you glued to the couch? Yes, unfortunately it's true that every year we must get older, but that doesn't mean we have to deal with pain in our back, knees, or shoulder. If your muscles and joints are sore, don't worry anymore. Come get acupuncture from me and you'll be pain-free. Acupuncture starts as low as $35 at a Better You Healthcare. Call me, Dr. Erica Olstein, at 615-5566. Stop your pain from driving you insane. Dean Powell Past Chemoing, 352-629-2440. In addition to our Past Chemoing service, we also offer fence row spraying. Now is the perfect time to get ahead on weed control for an overall aesthetic appearance. Dean Powell Past Chemoing, 352-629-2440 or online at powellgene, G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com. We are licensed and insured. Dean Powell Past Chemoing, 352-629-2440. There's a car accident in this country every five seconds. That's why Allstate thinks it's time for an entirely different kind of car insurance with features like accident forgiveness and a safe driving bonus. It's called Your Choice Auto, and it's only from Allstate. Are you in good hands? You deserve better. Sign up for Your Choice Auto from Allstate. Call the McDonald Agency today at 622-2333. Features are optional and subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Insurance, Northbrook, Illinois. Nestle in the heart of horse country, just off I-75, exit 354, the award-winning and newly refreshed Howard Johnson Inn of Ocala invites you to pamper yourself in one of our comfy guest rooms. Enjoy our free and fast Wi-Fi, heated outdoor swimming pool, 24-hour fitness center, and our deluxe continental breakfast. Other on-site amenities include a restaurant, putt-putt, golf, and a car wash. Go happy, go hojo at the Howard Johnson Inn of Ocala, proud sponsor of Friday Night High School Football on WOCA, The Source. The most trusted name in news, Fox News, every half hour, only on 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. W-O-C-A. 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Carol Ann Baldwin is in the studio and talking about gardens and lawns and mulch and rain and and, and everything, really. If you want, all that you want to be on the show with Carol Ann, whether it's a question or just to offer your thoughts on something that she's talking about, the number is 352 622 Nine six two two. You have some people watching the line. You never know where they're watching. So. No, no, that's always cool. Uh, just because it is National Coffee Day, just you know, trying to look through and find some stuff. Coffee, the um, Arabica coffee. It is one that grows. You know, here you would have to grow it in some kind of a greenhouse or something because it's zone uh, 10 to 11, which would be down the Keys area. Uh, okay. And it does require regular water, like you were saying. That's quite a bit of water with it, and that. Um, the average arabica plant large bush with dark green oval leaves that they call the fruits or cherries that's another name for it are rounded and mature in seven to nine months they usually contain two flat seeds the cough which are the coffee beans when only one bean develops it's called a pea berry uh, huh. ro- robusta is a robust shrub or small tree that grows up to 10 meters high um they don't give you a whole lot on growing it, you know, here because huh. there's not much, I don't think, coffee grown in the continental U.S. just because the... So what is yeah, Juan the, Valdez tasting? In that commercial where Juan Valdez is walking through the, the coffee vine... The yard, coffee field? Whatever yeah, it is. Or, yeah. He picks something and he tastes it, and it's perfect. And now it's ready. What is he tasting? The, the berry? It could be that he's checking. I don't see why he would taste it because they do wash that off of there. Um, ripe coffee should be harvested and picked from trees with a high production and without any disease. The pulp is the cherry washed uh, uh, 
Pulp the cherry by hand. Wash with water and ferment in a small container till the pulp falls off. So maybe he's just checking, you know, maybe he's just lying to us all. But <laughs> maybe but because a, I'm not a coffee drinker, I don't know a whole lot about coffee. Do you I like I, the way it smells? I do. Yeah, I like so. the way fresh coffee smells. Growing up as a child, my mom only drank perked coffee. None of this. When Mr. Coffee came out, she said, oh, one of those things is never coming in her house. And it never did. I she also had wonder a if there's a difference because I, I don't anymore. I, I believe you have a stronger pot of coffee when really? you've got a perked coffee. And um, But she was... She was and you know, you know, if you go to Europe, they uh-huh. call... Rob and I are going to do this thing in Chattanooga. It's not right. Europe, but they're right. doing this thing and we're participating right. from the French cafe perspective. Okay. That's why we're going for the music. Right. And and if you ask for coffee or cafe, cafe, right? It's it's not what we drink. It's it's no, it's, it's more different. like espresso. Okay, so right. So you have to say cafe American. It has to be American right, coffee. Right, right. To where it's a yeah, which you're is not, from their perspective, it's watered down. It's weak, right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But that's yeah, and interesting, that, huh? It is the way the coffee is served around the around the world. But yeah, no, as a child, I'd wake up in the morning, oh, <laughs> mom's got coffee go, and I'd come down the stairs and go, is the tea kettle on? And by the way, <laughs> I have the same feeling about tobacco products. I kind of right. like, especially cigars and pipes. If you smell the the pipe tobacco, I like and the way it right smells. in the pouch, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and things like that. That that smells. So, and I'm you know because I'm a reform smoker, and I'm I'm becoming one of them horrible people now that I always said I didn't want to be. Ew, that stinks. <laughs> So you don't like the smoke yeah. smell? Not, yeah, not, but, but, I mean, now a pipe, yes. I, but yeah. now, um, when David was here last week, I can't remember if he said it off the air or not, but he said something about wanting to grow uh, tobacco. Uh-huh. And I said, oh, do you smoke? And he said, well, a cigar now and then. He said, the average, to smoke four a day, he can't even imagine smoking four a day. Right. On the other hand, when I smoked cigars, I was terrible. I mean... Yeah. I was a chain cigar, cigar smoker. Sm- Ooh, that's yeah. bad. Yeah, I Not saw in- somebody. I saw somebody doing that, and I'm going, "Oh my lord, how can you smoke?" Because they were stogies. They just weren't cigars. They were stogies. <laughs> yeah, right, right, but, right. Man, how? Can but anyway, you- so he was thinking about growing tobacco. Tobacco, yeah. I mean, that's got to grow well um, here. It does grow well here. I and we we grew tobacco once in our home garden, um, but we grew one kind. But didn't Suzanne's and you really need to have more than one kind in order to oh, get really? you know, the, oh, it's the, a blended the, thing. It's a blend, right? If you ever read the packages, or nowadays there's no commercials on television or anything, it will say a fine blend or a blend of fine tobaccos, okay. um, and that they're cured. It's quite a process, actually. And you know, but and, I have a recollection when Suzanne did this show, Suzanne Shuffet, uh-huh. that she she picked tobacco worms off when she was a child. Yeah, I think she said she used to help pick tobacco, and it was the oh, st- stinkiest, messiest plant to have to work with it, it could have been or and or also or having to be sent out probably the children oh. generally going out and picking the tobacco worms off because oh. they're like a tomato hornworm where you know they're they're big and if you you know they're goo they're soft and squishy and and you know gross hmm. and but they're devastating to a crop you know on that yeah, so yeah. but yeah one of those another one of those things that you you can grow it um your successes because unless you have you know a, a quite a you know different varieties we happened to get it my my sister-in-law was traveling through uh carolina and they were there was a, a field of tobacco and she stopped in and and talked to some and they handed her a, a a, a dozen plants. Really? Yeah, a dozen little little seedlings. Did and, she and dry them up? And no, we we she brought them home to us and we planted them. Really? And, but I mean, did you ever them. dry them and, and we tried roll to, them? We or? tried. Yeah, we we. It didn't we work did out? our best. It wasn't very tasty. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Yes. Uh, some years ago, uh, there was a uh, a picture made called Parish. P A R R I S H. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was uh, a, 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 about uh, tobacco growing in the Connecticut River Valley, uh, the cigar wrapper tobaccos. Okay. And uh, uh, it's an it's an informative little picture. There's you know a couple of you know there's a love story and a you know a, a love triangle going on <laughs> uh, in the picture. I mean, uh, but uh, 
it, it says it, it talks a lot about the the, uh, the practice of growing tobacco, and it's a, it's a neat picture to pick up uh, off your Netflix or whatever. Oh, cool, cool. What's it? You said it's called Parish. 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 P a r r i i s h. Right, right. Just like the town down south of Tampa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought maybe it was uh, from, but you say it's up from the northeast, actually. Yeah, but it's yeah, it t- takes place in the Connecticut River Valley. Wow. Huh. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's something for somebody okay. to can look that up and yeah. see something fun, uh, or interesting at least, yeah. I, th- I think tobacco would not be such a, a <clears throat> problem if we weren't such habitual creatures. I think if we approach sure. it the way David approaches it or the right. way the Native Americans approached it. Exactly, and of course, once it, once the, the crop became a commercial thing and the blends and things like that right. and they they say that so many additives and things like that I'm, i i kind of wonder if they're additives or if it's just that these are characteristics of the plant themselves in some instances and these are just some of the the chemicals that you could separate out of this that that you're consuming um and the commercialization, you know, the the addiction, and we all have, you know, we all seem to have addictive personalities, or many people do. That you know, you get, right. can, you know, hooked I can't on this, eat one and Oreo. it's not a, yeah, who can eat, you know, one Lay's potato chip, <laughs> yeah, do doesn't doesn't work yeah, like that. Yeah. But you know, it, it, you know, like you say, if if we were a type of people who only, you know, like like our forefathers or the Native Americans, or you know. Tobacco was was ceremonial or just you know limited use. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we we see what happens if you ever watch any of the documentaries of, on the cocoa, uh, you know, or the or the betel nut and things like that in South and Central America, oh, where they sit there yeah. and chew on these things and wander around their life basically high. Right. Yeah. What is okay? Cocoa is spelled C O C O A. Right. What is C O C A O? What is that? Cacao. But is it? The same thing, just misspelled? That's li- the liqueur. Oh, that's a liqueur? Oh, okay. The creme de cacao. <laughs> C-R-E-M-E de cacao. I don't know. D-E-C-A-C-A-O. What is? Let me, let me tell what you. is? Google. Uh, Google. Yeah, you know, that's Siri. Um, what is cacao? <laughs> what is cacao? Um, two little things, though. I want to make sure that we get out because, you know, we're sitting here goofing around. Uh, the Florida Friendly Landscaping Challenge is coming up. Uh, this is the one within the Florida Friendly Landscaping Principles, October the 17th. And so if you're going to sign up for that, it's by the o- October the 3rd, $15. That's uh, a Saturday from nine to five so it's an all-day event but uh something really good on on all your florida friendly landscaping principles i looked up cacao but we'll have to wait till the break is over okay we'll take a little break and be right back if you want to call in the number is 622-9622 i see the phone ringing so i'll take that call and you'll have to be on hold for about two and a half minutes we'll be right back The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for today. Clouds and breaks of sun warm and humid with a couple of showers and a heavy thunderstorm or two. Watch for flooding downpours, the high 84 to 88. Partly to mostly cloudy tonight with a shower or thunderstorm in the area near the coast early on, below 72 to 76. Tomorrow, times of clouds and sun with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, the high 86 to 90. Thursday, mostly cloudy with a shower or thunderstorm, high 86 to 90. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Whether you're building it up or knocking it down, get it done, rent it now. Sunbelt Rentals is here to make your job a little easier. Our knowledgeable staff will help you find the right equipment for any job, big or small. Did you know that Sunbelt Rentals carries heaters, air conditioners, generators, lighting, traffic control, and so much more? So whether you're building it up or knocking it down, we've got the equipment you need. Get it done, rent it now. And right now, for a limited time, you can have it for less. Just by mentioning this ad, if you rent it Friday afternoon, you can keep it the whole weekend and only pay for one day. But this is a limited time offer, so stop into Sunbelt Rentals today, Northwest 27th, just a quarter mile east of I-75. For more information, just give us a call, 352-369-9101. 352-369-9101. Sunbelt Rentals. Get it done, rent it now. 352-369-9101. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy. 
never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results and all but given up on my sex life. Then I found the doctors at New Mayo Medical Center. Wow, they made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy, and no longer worry about my performance. New Mayo treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. All right, 12 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Caroline Baldwin, of course, is here. Caroline is a master gardener, and that's what she talks about during this uh, hour each, each uh, Tuesday. And you do have a phone call waiting for you. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Yes, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Um, cacao is the plant on which, uh, from which we, uh, we get chocolate. Uh, the cacao plant uh, produces this big pod, only a little bit smaller than the one in uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Okay. <laughs> and, and when you break open the pod, then there, that's all. That's where the cocoa beans are. That's where this, yeah. Oh, okay. And then you, uh, you, know, you do whatever it is you do to the cocoa beans to get uh, chocolate. Right, right, yeah. Then the processes begin. So that's yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. So the the cacao is the is the parent of the ch- of the chocolate. Okay, of the cocoa. Oh, of the cocoa. Right. Of the cocoa. So somebody misspelled it somewhere, and they're just no, stuck with it. I think they probably, ch- yeah, <laughs> could, could that's be. What they, that's, that's the way the, the botanists uh, spell it. Right. There you go. All right, thank you. Cool, thanks. Have a good day. Yep. Bye. Uh, yeah, that's another thing. I think if we actually knew what the processes were yeah, to yeah, make yeah. chocolate, uh, people would probably be a little upset because I know they say, you know, processed, you know, when you get some of the chocolates, it'll tell you. <clears throat> That it's alkaline, uh, dura, you know, the, oh, how, they, really? how they pull that out of there. It's, you know, different different methods. And hmm. So it's one of the one of those vicious... Uh, it's funny, when I when I looked it up, there was a... It, it almost looks like a Reese's cup, but it's not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, it's, but it's that kind of a thing. And it has the cacao pieces embedded in the dark okay. chocolate. Oh, okay. Pieces of the, of, bean, of the actual bean. Of the seed. Yeah. Ooh, I wonder if that's good or not. That might taste. Because that you, might be. Yeah. That might be a little harsh. Have you ever had that harsh, that yeah. unsweet chocolate that your mom put into a oh, cake? The ba- yeah. Or maybe you chocolate. did. I don't yeah, know. No. In I, my case, it would have been my mom. <laughs> my my brother ate that once when my even that's horrible. Because, as a small small child with. Try, with my mom trying to explain to him that no it's not candy it has no sugar in it it doesn't taste good he insisted that it was candy and that he must <laughs> have a piece of it and my mother's insistence trying you know trying to warn him he insisted so she broke him off a piece and he stuck it in his <laughs> mouth and he <laughs> and did not like it same thing with Crisco you could not that child had to learn by tasting, but he's now a, he's a great cook now. So that's so you, know, you ready for this? Yeah. Uh, Easter trumps Valentine's Day with the no- amount of chocolate eaten, but Halloween trumps both of them. Oh, well, I get. Yeah. More than ninety million pounds of chocolate are, are purchased on Halloween time. Wow. 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 Easter and Valentine's Day are about seventy-one million pounds. I can see where Valentine's would be a little bit less because usually Valentine's is for the sweetheart. Um, and not for the whole and neighborhood. Not for the whole, <laughs> and not, or not for the whole family. Right, right. You know, you might get the children a small chocolate heart or something right. like that. Where Easter, it's mostly the children and everybody. <laughs> right, and and right. Halloween is everybody, you know, share the chocolate. <laughs> right, they're coming to the door. Pass the chocolate. Good morning. You're on the earth, Carol Ann. Morning again. <laughs> yeah. Down in South Florida, they have a chocolate festival at Fairchild Gardens around TPIE time. Oh, do they? Um, which is quite interesting because Mars puts on a big display on how um, chocolate was actually made. Okay. The old age, how they processed it and all that. And it actually was a drink. And um, the rich people used to drink it like a tea. Really? Um, oh, wow. And it said that the actual chocolate today is not chocolate. It's just got all the sugar and all that stuff. If you actually you can taste 
that Heritage Chocolate of the Time is in like little rolls or something like that, like a little cylinder thing. Right. And it doesn't have much sugar, and it's, but it's not really bad. It just doesn't have all the stuff that's in today's sugar. It's so the, in today's chocolate. Cho right, in commercial chocolate. Right, and, and actually, if you look around, the chocolate that's in uh, Mexico has a whole different, I think that's more like what you're saying, some of that old, old, style of yeah. chocolate that yeah we made we've added or, or confectioners chocolatiers have turned it into a, a a confection that you would eat as a a treat yeah yeah the mars puts on a great display if anybody ever sees like a heritage festival of anything like that they're usually there just in the times give out samples and actually show how it's processed oh wow they would, they would take the pods the cocoa pods uh -huh. the tree eat them in a pile in the sun and let the flesh, which is the fruity part, mm -hmm. rot off. Right. And as it rots off, they would turn them to get to those beans. Right. So they have the common drying practices we have. Oh, but it sure. Is quite interesting. Yeah. Anyway, good day again. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that, Sharon, Sharon, I'm going to recruit you to do the show. Look out. You have another phone call. <laughs> good morning. You're on there with Carol Ann. Yes, I have a question. I have uh my lawn and it's covered with what I guess they call thistle. Okay. What's the best way to the best way to get rid of that? Um, you just what what type of grass do you have? Well, it's mostly Saint Augustine, I guess. I do throw winter rye down. Okay. Uh, you know. But the yeah, but the thistle got in there. What you need is a broadleaf weed killer. So anything that's labeled for use on Saint Augustine, it's usually going to be your atrazine um, or um, the I can't remember the name of the chemical that, that would be in um, one that would do the nut sedge possibly would take care of the thistle in there. Um, you know, you try to keep them from growing large enough to produce seed. Uh, in order, you know, in order to weaken it down, if you if you felt like you needed to, or you only had a few, you take the paper plate kind of thing around each thistle. You could treat it with uh, with just a general herbicide, a contact herbicide. Just don't spray the lawn, and that right. would take down in you know down in there. If you've just got you know hit and miss spots like that. You mm -hmm. know, would be the surefire. That's going to kill it off for sure. Uh, but your your atrazine should be able to knock that knock that out, and then you know atrazine. you just got to watch okay. for next year. And when's the best time to throw this winter rye grass down? I'd be waiting till October, maybe even early November. If we cool down um, a little bit more, I, it'll start coming up and do well. You can. I, I would have it down generally before mid November. Okay. For it to get All you right. know, to get it established so that it'll be uh ready and set for the colder weather. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And All right, bye -bye. thank you. It looks like you have another phone call. Hey. Good morning, you're on the air with Carol Ann. Hey, good morning, Carol Ann. Good morning. Larry. Hey Joe. You know there's a chocolate education center in Ocala, don't you? A what a what education? Chocolate. Chocolate Education Chocolate. Center? No, I did not. It's on 14 and 1st Avenue. It's called Ocala's Chocolate and Confectioners. I mean, you can go in there and... Oh, I know the place. Education oh. on chocolate. Oh, wow. Oh, really? <laughs> That's a great place. Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably come out 10 pounds heavier, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That is a great place. Uh, yeah. I, you know what I call that? I call the best smelling place in Ocala. Oh, I can imagine. When you walk yeah. in there, it just smells so good. All the chocolate. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> they, 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 he's probably right, though. I'm sure they have, yeah, I'm sure I, they I know said, chocolate. They know the history yeah. and know the, yeah. Great, great. So, well, we need need a chocolate lesson. We'll have to go It is. Down. If you've never been there, yeah. give them a free, a free plug. They are really a good They're place really to good. go. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I mean, anything that can be covered in chocolate is, is covered, covered in chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> if you cover it in chocolate, it's going to taste better. <laughs> what, we, we went to uh, the Market of Marion the other day, and there was uh, some kids raising money for their school. Okay. And they had melted chocolate and then put chocolate into the chocolate and then froze it, and then were selling it in little plastic bags to raise money. Oh, so it's chocolate kinda, filled chocolate. Well, it's like the, okay. For example, let's say they melted a Hershey bar. Okay. And then in the melted Hershey bar, they put like a kiss and a piece oh, of a Kit okay. Kat and a piece okay. of a Snickers bar. Right. And then right. it all became one, one candy, candy bar. Candy bar. Yeah. In a, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, something different. I don't know if they made any money because I think they were selling it for 50 cents a bag. And I was thinking, I think there's wow. probably more than 50 cents worth of chocolate yeah, in there. Yeah, in there. Well, you never yeah. know. Yeah. You never know. Or the cho- may have some of it been donated or however. Right, right, but right. I, one thing I did see that was really cool about chocolate is to make like a little cup, maybe a dessert cup using chocolate, melt your melt your chocolate. Oh, yeah. And, and put your dollop on the wax paper and then take the long skinny balloons, blow them up all the way and then dip them into your chocolate and set that on there right keep those upright chill them and then just pop the balloon and lift it out take that off and And then have a a chocolate serving dish oh that is cool and i said yeah that with some ice cream and a piece of brownie (laughs) it must be that time of year we're talking more about food food than gardening than gardening that's it it. although there is We're a connection. into that season. Yeah, cacao so is the connection. That's the connection. Oh, so what was the and thing? And coffee and cacao. We had coffee and chocolate. Coffee and chocolate. Now, what was the thing I read you that you could grow the cacao plant here in in, in I, Southern I, America? Southern United States? I use, yeah, it said oh, Southern America is what it said. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and if yeah, not South doing, America. If they're, if they're having a, a festival like that down within first. It's possible that we do grow some chocolate. This is what it says. It's a small cacao, the small tropical American evergreen tree that bears the seeds of the cacao, which which are contained, like Jim said, in large oval pods that grow on the trunk. Mostly cultivated in West Africa, but they can grow in uh, the Southern Americans. Southern Americans? Southern Americans. I mean, we're, Americas are a very I don't know what that means. Big, yeah, are we I don't talking know if that means South, South America, America or Central Southern, America? Or so, yeah. yeah, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Southern Americans. Because hmm. it's not in, you know, just looking in, in, in my book here, it's not in there. I'll have to look it up. Hmm. Where to grow? Well, I'll tell you this. I am not going to grow it. <laughs> we might it's take a look. much there. easier. <laughs> just to go out and buy just a Just go to the candy store. There yeah. you go. <laughs> uh, gosh, it went fast today. Yes, it did. Ever, ever think about doing a marathon? Gardening, marathon, gardening yeah. marathon. Yeah, just, just. I don't know. Can we keep going that long and actually talk about gardening? I'm not sure. I think if it's... we got into the spring, we might. Really? That would be. Yeah. Where's your song? Oh, it is your song. I hear the song. All right. I hear it. Wow, is it? I think I started it early. Not well. Fifty nine. Uh, so I oh, guess that's okay. it. That's it. Yeah. You're on and, your way. And, be careful and, out there. Uh, right. And and you're looking to get a hold of Master Gardeners. They're getting ready to change their hours. Instead of being nine to noon and one to four, it's going to just run ten to four right on through. So um, starting the first of October. And that way, if you're on your lunch hour and you need to talk to a Master Gardener, you can. There will be someone there instead of having to wait until one o'clock. All right. So. You got to write a book, David. David is my inspiration for yeah, writing for books. writing books, yeah. 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 I just if, yeah, somebody give me a couple extra hours in a day yeah, or right, a week right, or a right. month. So. <laughs> well, thank you, Caroline. Always, thank you, always Larry. Fun. Love oh, this yep. show. Have a good time. We'll be right back. Aspen Martis is coming on. Uh, she was raped and she survived it, and she's written about it. We'll talk about that when we come back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Radio on Lily Mu, the outgoing House Speaker, has given his endorsement. Now, a California lawmaker is trying to line up the votes. Vowing he would change the culture of Washington if elected Speaker, House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy is now working the phones in his bid to succeed John Boehner, who abruptly resigned last week. Fox Radio's John Decker in Washington. We need for them to believe once again that this is their government. The California lawmaker who spoke on Fox News this morning said he believed he will ultimately clear the 218 vote threshold when the 434 members of the House cast their ballots. Baseball legend Yogi Berra's funeral at a church in New Jersey will be a private family affair, but people can also see it televised by the New York Yankees Yes Network this morning. And home prices rising steadily in July as buyers competed for a smaller supply of housing. Fox News, we report, you decide. Do shopping online and using public Wi-Fi make you vulnerable to identity theft? Does giving out your social security number put you at risk? Is your dog at risk of identity theft? Yes, yes, and no. 
Your dog has absolutely nothing to worry about. But we do live in a world that can expose a lot of personal information, and that can lead to having your identity stolen and losing everything you've worked for. That's why at LifeLock, we use proprietary technology to detect a wide variety of threats. And unlike free credit monitoring services, we have a dedicated U.S.-based staff to help restore your identity if it ever is compromised. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses. But if you ask yourself whether you're worth protecting with the best, isn't the answer a resounding yes? Plans start at $9.99 a month, and now you can get 10% off. Go to lifelock.com and use promo code NEWS. Today in Florida Ag News, from a Southeast Agnet, USDA's National Agriculture Statistics Service will collect survey results from producer packers and others to help fruit and vegetable operations preparing to meet new federal food safety requirements. The 2015 Produce Post-Harvest Microbial Food Safety Practices Survey marks the first time since 1998 that such a survey has been conducted. NAS Administrator Joseph T. Riley encouraged operators to participate in the survey, noting that the implementation of the Food Safety Modernization Act might affect post-harvest business.